March is another crazy month again this year for updates. Let's just jump right in. A company by the name of Cognition has come out of stealth mode and launched an AI automated software engineer called Devon. This engineer can be given an application or a task to handle and it will create the path to solving the problem and then go down the path to creating the application or the tool that you requested along with debugging anything that comes up along the way. Check this out. Hey, I'm Scott from Cognition AI, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devin, the first AI software engineer. Let me show you an example of Devin in action. I'm gonna ask Devin to benchmark the performance of Llama on a couple different API providers. From now on, Devin is in the driver's seat. First, Devin makes a step-by-step -step plan of how to tackle the problem. Exactly. After that, it builds a whole project using all the same tools that a human software engineer would use. Devin has its own command line, its own code editor, and even its own browser. In this case, Devin decides to use the browser to pull up API documentation so that it can read up and learn how to plug into each of these APIs. Here, Devin runs into an unexpected error. I think you get the perspective. Now, if you were wondering what type of CEO this guy was as a kid, this might show you into a window of that. Check this out. And the next question is, what is the value of 255? Scott. 5,000. 5,000 is the correct answer. And Scott is now ahead two to nothing. Moving on to the third question of our matchup. And the next question is, the digits one, two, three, four, and five can be arranged to, Scott. 60. 60 is the correct answer. I know, crazy. Right now, Devin is limited to a select group of users, but it's going to be going out to a broader audience in the future. I'm going to keep my eyes on this one, and whenever it does become available to everyone, I'll make sure that you all know uh, right away. This also coincides to the comment NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang made about kids not spending time going to college to learn computer science. Now, he doesn't believe that it's a safe career anymore. Jensen believes that the new programming language is human. And if he says this, I can't help but believe him. Well, we are on the topic of NVIDIA. They are having their annual developers conference this week, which is sure to be another one for the records. You can catch some of the events virtually if you would like, and it will be going through March 21st. There will be over 900 sessions, 300 exhibits, and 20 technical workshops on different topics about generative AI. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description. NVIDIA has really been leading the charge on everything AI because their chips are the ones powering all of the advancements. Just to think that this company was started for only $200 and was focused on gaming. Now it was just revealed that Apple is in talks to integrate Google's Gemini into all of its iPhone features. On this news, both of their stock prices were up pretty significantly, which shows what people think of something like this. It really points the finger on both of their strategic efforts to compete with Microsoft-backed OpenAI, which you recently saw introduced Sora for their video generation tool, which made everybody who wasn't into artificial intelligence start to look more into the topic. Now, this could potentially put Google's AI services on more than 2 billion active Apple devices. Google has also just unveiled a project they are working on called Vlogger, which is an AI that can bring still photos to life. Now there are others doing this now, but when backed by Google, we can expect this to be pretty good and probably significantly better than the others. Ultimately, it creates a 3D avatar and allows for animating still images to make them look like real people. This could be used in virtual reality and online communications and even news and creator-centered workflows. Check this out. Our model just takes a single input image of a person and generates a video of that person in that image talking. We can react people speaking in different languages and animate not only the face, but also the body and the hands. 
Yeah. We do keep heading deeper and deeper, though, into scenarios in the real world where we can't tell the difference between what we're seeing if it's real or fabricated. We really need to solve this problem before it gets really out of control. Grok AI, the LLM from Elon Musk, has now been open sourced. Elon Musk has focused on a much more uncensored AI experience. Now this comes after a bit of public battle which included Elon Musk suing OpenAI, which he was also a part of founding. Now he was saying that they didn't stay on their original mission. How will this affect the models that the developers are using to create applications for the future? This is still a question that we all need to answer. If you want to think about it, Elon Musk is integrating Grok AI into X, his platform which he bought. So you can guess that he's already got an audience that will be using it, and it will be massive. These are just a few of the top stories recently, but I keep this and much more in my newsletter, which I put out every Tuesday morning. I'll put a link in the description below for you to sign up. And don't forget to check out my AI toolbox, which I'll also put in the description with all of the latest news and tools in AI, right? So you don't have to dive down all the rabbit holes that I have already gone down. Keep in mind, March isn't over yet, and you can expect so much more to come before we get into April, and I will stay on all of it for you. Stay tuned.